Welcome to this Easy 11 Plus short lesson on Venn diagrams. As always, the worksheet for today's lesson is linked in the video description, along with lots of other useful resources. If you find this lesson useful, please remember to like, subscribe, and click the bell button. And don't forget that my Easy 11 Plus live lessons are every Tuesday evening at six o'clock in this channel. Let's get started. So here we have a very typical looking Venn diagram question. Let's read the information at the top. Sun Lounger Sales Fig is an interesting magazine for the Sun Lounger industry, carried out a survey in which they asked people to write down their favourite holiday activities. They interviewed 240 people, all of whom said that they enjoyed going on holiday. Here are their results as a Venn diagram using percentages. One number is missing. Let's scroll on and have a quick look at the first question while we look at this. So we need to fill in the missing percentage in the most likely place in the diagram. Well, this might be a good point to talk about what this diagram actually means. So they've asked people what they most enjoy doing on holiday. And for example, 15% of people said, I like going on social media. 10% said that they enjoyed reading a trashy novel. And 5% explained, liked explaining why they'd rather be at home. I think we all know somebody who's gone on holiday and particularly enjoyed that activity. But what about this here? So this is in the social media circle and the reading a trashy novel circle. So this tells us that 5% of people said that they enjoyed social media and reading a trashy novel. So when I said that 15% of people liked social media, I should have said 15% of people only mentioned social media. We can also see here that 10% of people said that they enjoyed both social media and explaining why they'd rather be at home and so on. But there's one point where we are clearly missing a percentage, and that is here. This is in the part that overlaps all three circles. So what must this mean? Well, this must be the place for people who referred to all three of these things. People who said, I like social media, explaining why I'd rather be at home, and reading a trashy novel. Now these are percentages. That should be useful when we think about what needs to go in this gap, because we've been told that only one result is missing, and we've got all these other percentages scattered ground. We've got 10%, 15%, 5%, 5, 10, 5, and 5. And we know that percentages need to add up to 100 percent out of 100. So let's add all of these together. 10 and 15, 25, plus 5 is 30, plus 10 is 40, 50, 55, 60. So what must be missing here? It must be 40%. 40% said that they like social media explaining why they'd rather be at home and reading a trashy novel. And that's our answer to part A here. Question B. 10% of results are inside the box above. This is the box around the outside here, but outside the circles. How many people does this percentage represent? So we've been dealing with percentages, now we need to go back to people. Let's have a look back at the information at the top and we've circled that 240 people were interviewed. So what's 10% of 240? 10% 10 of 240, oops, that's better. 10% of 240, well, we don't really need to do any calculations here. You know that you find 10% by dividing by 10 and you divide a number by 10 by taking off the zero at the end if it has one. So that's going to be 24, so the answer is 24 people. Suggest a possible answer to the survey which would belong in this 10%. So if they said any of the things described in these three circles, such as social media, they wouldn't be out there, they'd be in one of these circles or in one of the border areas between them. So this must be for a different answer. Could that be, I don't enjoy anything about going on holiday? No, it couldn't because we learn at the top that all of them said they enjoyed going on holiday, so they must enjoy something. These must be the people who've said that they enjoyed something else. And you could really say anything at all here. For example, swimming. You could write, I enjoy swimming, but these people have presumably just been asked to write down the things that they enjoyed. Simple as that. It could be more than one thing. It could be swimming and eating pizza. Sun Lounger sales figures say this. These results are bad news for the Sun Lounger industry. Do you agree with this statement? Explain your answer. So this looks really difficult, but as always when something looks difficult, let's go back to our data and think about what we know. Are these results bad news for the Sun Lounger industry? 
Well, if you look at the things people have listed, they've listed explaining why they'd rather be at home, going on social media and reading a trashy novel. None of these main results say sunbathing. So you could write an answer like this. I agree because people don't seem to prioritise sunbathing. And that would be a correct answer because you've reached a sensible conclusion and explained how it's based on the evidence. Let's have a look again. When I look at explaining why I'd rather be at home, going on social media and reading a trashy novel, my first thought, of course, is these things are not sunbathing. But when I look again, I consider that these are all things that you might easily do while sunbathing. And so that's another possible answer. So this answer is also based on the evidence and also makes perfect sense. Finally, I should mention that if you said, I disagree because there isn't enough evidence to reach a conclusion, that would in the end be a correct answer because both of the answers we've given are guesses and a guess isn't really enough of a reason to conclude that these results are either good or bad news for this industry. There's one last thing I'd like to say about this Venn diagram. If we look back at it here, it's easy to see how we categorise somebody who says, I like social media and explaining why I'd rather be at home. Perhaps they do that on social media. We can also see how you categorise somebody who says, I like going for a swim or I like eating chips. They go outside in this area here. But what about somebody who says, I like going on social media and swimming? There's no natural place in this diagram to incorporate them. An interesting thought. It doesn't affect the question or your answers to it but it might be something to bear in mind if you ever have to set up a Venn diagram that really captures the likely range of possibilities. Of course, one way to read this is simply that nobody in answering this survey said something that overlapped this area and this area, and so this was a perfectly appropriate way to present the information that was actually given. Let's go on to the next question now. This is quite a similar question, so it gives us a chance to experiment with some of the skills that we've just been working on. Paris Stu conducts a survey of the dentists in her local area, asking them to select their favourite procedures. 300 dentists provide answers. I doubt that many clients of dentists have favourite procedures, perhaps just most hated ones, but it wouldn't be entirely surprising if there were some dentists out there who enjoyed their jobs. She gives them three options, extracting teeth, fillings, and cleaning and polishing. They can select as many or as few of these as they like. Here are her results as a Venn diagram, and it's worth circling 300 dentists because we're almost certainly going to need that information later on. How many dentists enjoy both extracting teeth and fillings? So dentists who enjoy both extracting teeth and fillings are here, but hang on a sec, these people here enjoy extracting teeth, fillings and cleaning and polishing, therefore these people can also be said to enjoy both extracting teeth and fillings. So here we've actually got 24%. So we need to find 24% of, and of is always times in maths, if you remember, unless it's out of, which is divided, 24% of, and if you remember there were 300 dentists surveyed, we circled that, 24% of 300, we've spoken about how to do this before, so let's just work it out now, 300 times 0.24, this is my preferred method for calculating percentages, 4 times 0 is 0, and so on. There are two digits in total after a decimal point in the question. So we count two from the right. One, two, and that gives us 72.00. So the answer is 72 dentists. You could also work this out if you consider that 24% means 24 out of 100. We've got 300, so three times 24 is 72. We've seen this before. One result is missing. Write the missing percentage in the most likely place in the diagram. So we can see that all the spaces within the circles are filled in, but perhaps there's room for something outside, down here. Let's add up our percentages. 12 and 12 is 24, plus 30, 54, plus 8, 62, plus 10, 72, plus 5, 77, plus 2, 79. That's 79 out of 100, so we need another 21%. And we can write that in there, or anywhere in the box that is outside the circles. So B part 2 here is going to be relatively straightforward because we covered this in the previous question. If this percentage is 
outside the circles, then it describes people who didn't choose any of those three answers. It might be because they gave a different answer or it might be because they didn't select any of them. We don't know which. So if we're going for exactly, we can't say what they did choose. We can just say what they didn't. 21%. Twenty-one percent of dentists did not choose any of the three options. Parastu says this, the majority of these dentists enjoy extracting teeth. Is she correct? Explain your answer. Again, let's go back to the diagram. So how many dentists enjoy extracting teeth? Well, looking at the percentages, we've got 30 plus 12 plus 12, so that's 54, plus 8 is 62%. So 62% of the dentists say that they enjoy extracting teeth. As you know, of course, a majority is anything more than half, anything more than 50%. So 62% is a clear majority. My handwriting is rather fallen apart here, but I hope you can read this. Yes, because 62% of dentists name extracting teeth as a favorite procedure. And that's all we need, a clear, simple answer. Juanita has invented the chili truffle blueberry explosion gatto. Wow. She decides to run a taste trial to see whether her customers like it. All customers are asked to fill in a questionnaire stating whether they are an adult or a child and whether they like or dislike the cake. Juanita sets out her results in the following Venn diagram. And we can see here that there are 42 plus 12 people in total who say that they like the cake and 20 plus 12, 32 people, are adults. And there are six people outside the circles, but within the box. So this is a rather different setup of Venn diagram. How many adults dislike the cake? So we've got a likes the cake circle here, and we've got an adult circle here. Now we can see that 12 of the adults are in the likes the cake circle, so they're the ones who like it. There are 20 adults here who are not in the likes the cake circle. Now you might wonder whether that could include people who just don't have a strong feeling about the cake. But if you go back to the wording of the question, we can see that they are asked whether they like or dislike the cake. They don't appear to be given another option. So we can say with some certainty that there are 20 adults who don't like the cake and who therefore dislike it. How many children dislike the cake? So people are given the option of being an adult or a child. They can't say, I'm somewhere in between. So if they're not an adult, they must be a child. The adults are all within this circle here. So everything else must be children. There are 42 children who like the cake. And this six, they must be children because they aren't in the adult circle. And they don't like the cake, so they must dislike the cake. So these must be six children who dislike the cake. How many people filled in Juanita's questionnaire? Okay, this one should be relatively easy. We need to add 42 and 12, 54, plus 20, 74, plus 6, 80. It might be sensible to write your working in the box here. I've just skipped through to save a little bit of time. Suggest a way in which Juanita's questionnaire could have been improved to make it more useful. Give a reason for your suggestion. Let's have a look back at the question and the diagram. So before I mention that there's no way here to categorise people who don't really have a strong feeling either way. People who go, it's okay, but I don't especially like it. And that might mean that some people have been forced into saying, I like it or I dislike it, when that isn't really their honest opinion. So you could give that as an answer. You could think about people who are old enough that they're barely children anymore. Let's say they're 17 years old, but they wouldn't be categorised as an adult here. But should they really be in the same group here as five-year-olds, they're likely to have very different tastes. So perhaps the survey could have asked for people's ages. What about people who don't like any cakes? If you don't like cake at all, then it doesn't really mean anything if you say that you don't like this cake, because however hard Juanita tries to bake the perfect cake, those people will never say that they like it. So it could have asked people, do you like any cakes? Those are some options. You may be able to come up with some other ones. Let's write some of those down, just so you've got them in front of you. It could have asked people's ages, because five and 15 year olds are likely to have different preferences.
There could have been a no strong opinions option so that people weren't forced to pick like or dislike. It could have asked whether people like any cakes. The opinions of a person who hates all cakes wouldn't help Juanita to improve this recipe. I hope at the end of that you have a good understanding of how to read Venn diagrams and the different ways that you can think about them, as well as just doing number-based maths. If you did find this useful, please like, subscribe and click the bell button. And please take a moment to explore the various links in the video description and to look through the other videos on my channel. I hope to see you next Tuesday at 6 o'clock for my next Easy 11 Plus live lesson. Goodbye.